Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to continue our series of AQ40 DPS guides and talk about Battleguard Satura. Battleguard Satura is a fight where your strategy will vary a lot depending on how your guild does the fight. Do you kill the ads first, then kill the boss? Do you cleave them all down? I'm going to discuss both strategies today using my own footage from last week's raid and also using Alejandro's, I think that's how you say his name? I don't know, but he's one of the best warriors out there and we're going to be reviewing how his guild does it as well. Before you get started guys, a lot of you who watch my videos are not subscribed so if you could subscribe i would really appreciate it also if you could drop a like to the video if you find this helpful that would be greatly appreciated as well but all of that said let's get into the video now before we get started depending on how your guild does this fight you're going to use a different strategy so first we're going to discuss my guild strategy this is a non-cleave strategy this is more of a strategy that most guilds out there will use not as sweaty as the cleave strategy this is killing the ads first then killing the boss that's what my guild does first we'll talk about the normal strategy then we'll talk about the cleave strategy timestamps are in the description below so so knowing what your guild does go ahead and either go to cleave or go to single or go to the normal strategy. Okay, so let's review the footage. So starting out before this fight, this is going to be a fight that is tricky when you're not doing the cleave strategy because A, the ads are very deadly. Whirlwind is deadly. All of the ads do it as does Satura. So one of the things you're going to want before we even get into the strategy, I think a very important thing that you need to think about is are you wearing more thick boy gear that you can maybe take a couple whirlwinds or not? If you're wearing a lot of leather, a lot of male titanic leg plates, things of that nature to where your stamina counts a bit low, you're going to want to consider putting on some more thick gear so you can eat a couple more whirlwinds. That's going to be critical to being able to stay in a little bit longer during execute phase and also stay in longer on the ads to get your DPS up. Now, my guild and perhaps your guild as well, they go ahead and, and they kill the ads first. So one thing that you're going to want to have top of mind as you go through the ads is that A, they're going to whirlwind, which does a good amount of damage. So you need to be prepared to move laterally out of the way. And B, they do a knockback. So have your if you get hit with the knockback, have your hand on that intercept button ready to get back in there because these ads don't have that much health as you'll see and they go down relatively quickly. Going to want to save cooldowns for Satura. You're not there's not you're not getting a lot of cleave opportunities, so you're going to want to save your cooldowns for the big boy. Here he comes. We're picking him up. We're getting a chance to get everyone in place, guys. This is a time um, you'll you'll see a couple of my guildmates rip off some cheapy some cheeky sappers. Um, do that at your own risk. Obviously, if you sapper right now, um, you're going to get the most damage because this is you know all the ads are right here, but. Just be careful because you could pull aggro on perhaps all three of them, depending on if the tanks for swings got resisted or they haven't had really had a chance to build threat. It's an easy way to die really quickly. So do sapper at the beginning at your own peril. So we get the ads um, out to where they need to go. And you'll see the, we mark the kill target skull. And now we're going to get into that. You'll see I need to put battle shout on. Um, I apply that now and we get into the ad. Now, one thing, if you'll look at my top right of my screen, is that I'm fully world buff still. I still have Songflower, all the Dire Maul buffs, Dragon, ZG. And one of the things you'll notice is that in one hit right there on the boss, I went to 53 rage. So you're going to want to walk a fine line between killing these ads is just doing as much damage as possible. Because they're going to be threat resetting. It's hard to tank these things. So it's going to be on your healers to keep you up. If you're wearing more Conqueror's gear, you can do more damage here. So you don't mind if you pull threat um, for a couple seconds. So really, uh, the beginning of the fight is just killing the ads. What you'll see just happen is that the ads will sometimes come into each other or another ad will go to knock someone back um, that's close to you and it will represent an opportunity to get some cleave off. If you see the two ads come close together, use that time to queue a cleave in and get a whirlwind off. Prioritize those. Um, over other abilities because of the cleave opportunity. You'll see here, I see that both ads are close to each other. I'm going to be able to get a cleave. My bar goes to green, I've queued cleave, um, and I'm, Whirlwind is 1.9 seconds away from coming off cooldown. So my priority in a situation like this is going to be making sure I get into um, melee range uh, to get the cleave off so my next swing will go out and then also getting the whirlwind off as soon as it's off cooldown and using bloodthirst immediately on skull um, so you'll see i do that i get the cleave off we get the whirlwind off and we get the um, bloodthirst off as well and that is just 
um, how you get the most damage possible in an opportunity like that, noticing that um, it, a cleave opportunity has represented itself to you. Don't just statically heroic strike when cleave opportunities present themselves. So we're killing the last ad, and the name of the game on Satura, when you use this strategy, is going to be um, selecting your trinkets and your cooldowns. So essentially what this fight is now is a single target fight with a guy who's going to do three things. First, he's going to Whirlwind. Whirlwind hurts a lot. You cannot stand in Whirlwind for more than two to three ticks, depending on how chunky you are. If you're flasking, maybe you can get a third or a fourth in there, but don't risk it, guys. With the Whirlwind, as I'm going to show you, you you're going to be able whirlwind is essentially isn't a constant ability it goes out um every couple seconds so if you're out of range when the attack goes out you can jump into uh, melee range get a few attacks in come back out miss the whirlwind or eat two of the whirlwinds and then get out for the third one so when your health is getting critically low key consumables right here are going to be make sure you have a lock cookie before this fight Make sure you have a lock cookie. Get your favorite lock. Um, shout out to my boy Gluck in my guild. Always hooking me up with the lock cookies. Um, but you're going to want to have that on hand. Very important. Secondly, Whipper Root Tubers. Those are great as well. A little bit of healing. Um, and you won't be sitting your potion CD. You do not want to put your potion CD... Um, you don't want to use your potion before it's time for execute phase with Satori. Because you're going to need a lip. So... We go in, and really what this fight is at the beginning is wanting to avoid the whirlwind, but also getting some hits in as you can at range. You'll see here I'm at range. I'm running out. Like You'll see right there, I was able to get a few attacks in, but I immediately got hit with two whirlwinds, taking me to half health. I don't want to risk it because his movement is so sporadic when he drops threat that you could easily, easily, if you have bad luck, get to half health and have him be essentially humping you for the next 10 seconds and you're going to have to blow your lip early if you don't want to die you won't have it for execute phase you're not going to be able to do ideal damage so you'll see i get out of the way i get healed i know i'm getting healed so i intercept right back in regular regular um rotation guys bloodthirst whirlwind heroic strike q bloodthirst um, as many heroic strikes as possible and you see the whirlwind goes out we get out a little bit we're going to start coming back in she comes back towards us. We're literally letting the whirlwind kind of go out this, this phase. And now we're going to get back in and start doing our rotation immediately. And you're going to see here going in at, you're going to, you're going to see here that running in, she's got 38% health left. She's going to start whirlwinding soon, but she's definitely not going to live for more than 30 seconds. So I go ahead and pop death wish. Popping Death Wish on something like Satora is going not going to be as easy, even though it's single target at this point, as like something like Magmadar, because she still can whirlwind um, at, at points when you're not ready for it, and you could very well, much well waste your Death Wish if, if you pop it too early. You really need to time your Death Wish to feel it out to where you know you're not only going to be able to get a few attacks in, but also use it for the full execute phase and be able to kill her um, really even if her execute phase is relatively short so even if you have it up um, for a couple seconds afterward it's not the worst thing in the world as long as you can get some good meaty execute damage done with it up while you know not dying my wreck was on cooldown from using it on scaram so i didn't wreck but um i would have I'll, I'll i'll say when i would have used wreck but also guys popping death wish and wreck here very careful be very careful um getting using both of those at the same time you're very susceptible to dying you eat two whirlwinds with wreck and death wish popped you better hope you're getting heals so let's see we'll go in health is dropping rapidly when she gets to this point especially when xq phase is right around the corner she starts melting so you're going to want to um, lay around the tax i sapper um, always good to use your sapper and we get into um, essentially um, waiting for the xq phase now we get her very close to execute phase and the whirlwind's going to start. She enrages, so you're really going to want to be careful. And I go ahead and pop a lip because I know whirlwind's about to start. And essentially what this is going to do is with this three, I've, I actually popped that lip a little too early. Could have, should have waited right when whirlwind went out. But essentially what you want to do, this is like the big secret if you do the fight this way. Save lip for execute phase. If she starts whirlwinding during this execute phase, you don't want to have to run out 
during this critical time with wasting death wish wasting wreck you're going to want to pop the lip you're going to be immune from damage for six seconds aggro is really not a big deal while she's whirlwinding because she's going to reset anyway so you go in and you kind of just go ham so that you'll see that that's what i do get a lot of good attacks on there um i see that uh my lips about to wear off so i get a little bit more careful getting ready to run away but she i i get lucky there she moves away very rapidly i'm able to miss a whirlwind tick get back in and get a th uh, 4k execute in um so so that's really the fight um in a nutshell um and a uh, badge of swarm guard badge of the swarm guard drop which i got and let me tell you that trinket is awesome so that's the fight if you do it um, in a more like normy sort of way, I guess. Like you're not as sweaty as the guilds that like are coordinated enough to have everyone just murder all the ads immediately. Um, that might be you. Um, if your guild does it this way, it's perfectly fine. I did 739 DPS, so you can still do great damage. Let's talk about Cleaveway now. Okay, so Cleave Strat, if you guys run this strat, good for you. I'm jealous because this is like an awesome, uh, awesome strat. But essentially, let's take a look at what um alandro i don't know how to say his name i'm just gonna call him Al alando 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 i don't know how to say his name alando we're gonna look at how he does this fight so um looking at the trinkets he's using he's using badge of the swarm guard and um i believe earth strike so popping those big d you, the great thing about something like swarm guard and earth strike is that you can pop swarm guard um, during earth strike you don't have to wait um those are that's like a double on you shrink if you have double on use that you can use at the same time you're going to want to use it in this strat because you're just going to be able to be, be able to do absolutely insane damage um so he's got wreck up he's got death wish up he's ready to go and essentially what this guild's going to do is they're going to group all of them together they're going to have people who are designated to stun these guys and keep them together um i believe the main tank challenging shouts and lips so it's like pretty much just open season that goes hard as you possibly can so they run in and, and also he's fully buffed guys if you look up at the right of the screen right now um homeboy has every single buff in the game and it's dark moon fair week and he's got the fire water on um those i'm gonna bet those are elemental sharpening stones and um he's gonna go in heavy on these guys so you'll see they run in they get all of them together when they're all together like this, he's going to do, even though the fight might last a little bit longer than 30 seconds, Death Wish at the beginning. You want to get, when you have more than um, one ad, when, you have, when you're dealing with something with like three ads like this fight to where there's going to be four targets in the same place, you want to pop Death Wish, you want to pop Wreck immediately, you want to um, be able to do, you're going to do more damage using um, Death Wish and Wreck Cleaves and, and Whirlwinds um, and bloodthirst on all of these uh, targets while they're together as opposed to trying to wait to um, how you do on like a single target fight and have them all run out when satura dies so you'll see that's what he does we'll see here if we look at the top of the screen death wish is up 24 seconds left we've got 25 seconds left of swarm guard and that's the swarm guard and we've got wreck with 15 seconds up and essentially guys if your guild can keep all the targets together this is open season to just be the best warrior you can possibly be i'm so jealous of this clip let's just watch um but essentially know that the setup for this is that double on use trinkets or at least one big d on use trinket in like dft or or hodge or something like that um depending on what you have get your sapper button ready get your lip button ready if, if if you need to if your health starts dropping rapidly but every single attack should be a cleave um you, essentially you're going to replace heroic strike with cleave until um, it's just Satura left. Intercept right back in. Uh, still all those cooldowns up to just rip massive damage into um, Satura. You'll see that um, Satura, you know, Rectus ran out. Satura's not an XE phase, but um, Homeboy's at 2.5k DPS is because how much you can do when the ads are up. So that's why to my previous point, when there's this many targets, pop your CDs while the targets are all together and rip massive cleave damage and um yeah i think he's going to lip basically what that's going to let him do is stand through that um stand through that whirlwind like we did on my fight and they're just going to break him down very quickly and um yeah you know that's if you if your guild does that strat my hat's off to you sir uh, i take off my lionheart helm and i salute you because that's awesome um links to his channel will be below 
that's it guys that's the video um another guy checked out i don't know who i'm gonna do next um maybe twin imps i don't know but thanks for tuning in please drop a like to the video and subscribe to the channel and you guys have a wonderful day peace